Okay, so I've done a lot of home workouts. I didn't even set foot in a gym for the first time until I was 27, and before that I was all barbell, dumbbell, bench press in houses that I shared with other people or in like my own flat. And then in the years since then, I've kind of kept that up. Sometimes I've had like a baby to deal with so I couldn't train at the gym. Sometimes I just needed to get in extra workouts at home. And also I've tried a lot of different fitness kit. I used to work on men's fitness, which meant we got a lot sent into the office. So I've tried out probably every piece of home gym equipment that you might be considering buying and probably quite a few that you aren't. And so in this video, I'm gonna give you my tier list of the best home gym kit. I'm gonna talk about some of the more big and expensive stuff too, but this is kind of aimed at getting the best value out of the money and space you have. Like if you're limited in either of those things, what should you buy? And by the end of this video, you should have a great idea of how to put together your own home gym, whatever your goals are. Sound good? Okay, let's do it. We're gonna start at A, and work our way all the way through to, I think why, I'm not sure anything begins with C. Okay, our first piece of kit is a great one, ab wheel. There aren't many better value for money options than an ab wheel in terms of things that will allow you to expand your training horizons. You can only really do like one or two moves with an ab wheel, but those moves are great. Ab wheel rollouts are one of the best moves you can do for your entire core. So your, not just your abs, but your obliques, your transverse abdominus, your lower back muscles, they're an anti-extension exercise, so I think they're really good for keeping that core stability that you need in so many movements. Just a great bit of kit. And they're super cheap. I think I got this one for less than $10. You can just take it apart, throw it in a bag, take it to the gym or the park with you. The only negative thing I have to say about them is they're not a move for absolute beginners. It might take you a bit of practice to get your first few rollouts, but it's absolutely worth putting in the effort. Just a great bit of kit. Ab wheel, A tier, you should probably get one. Okay, piece of kit number two, bands. Now bands are probably the one piece of kit that I would recommend to any person thinking about starting working out at home. They're great if you're a total beginner, you still need them if you're a professional strongman or an Olympic athlete. Bands just massively expand the range of movements you can do. You can use them to add resistance to moves like squats and press ups. You can use them to do moves like curls and upright rows. But you can also use them for mobility work and warm ups that I think is just super, super important for everyone. If the only move you could do with bands was pull aparts, I would still recommend them because I think they're so important for shoulder health and posture. I do a warm up every time I train upper body, which is pull aparts, dislocates, behind the neck Ws, and it really does keep my shoulders healthy, keeps everything in shape. They're super cheap, you can throw them in your bag, you can take them to the gym, you can take them on holiday, you can take them anywhere with you, get a set of bands, S tier. Okay, barbell slash Olympic bar. Now, maybe I should be making a distinction between these two things because honestly, they're quite difficult. A regular barbell is gonna be a lot shorter, it's probably gonna be lighter, and it's almost certainly gonna be cheaper. An Olympic bar is like a big thing, big investment, takes up quite a lot of space in your house. The thing I would say about both of them is they allow you to do the same kind of moves. An Olympic bar is just for someone who's taken things a little bit more seriously. And again, you kind of already know if you need an Olympic bar. If you're a really serious trainer and you're starting to get into like heavy deadlifting, heavy squatting, you want to do that at home, you already know that. If you need bumper plates because you want to do some ollie stuff and you've got like somewhere that you can drop it on the floor, you already know that. For a regular person, do I think the Olympic bar is valuable? I think, yeah, sure. Like I have had a barbell in my house before. It was great. I used to do a lot of barbell complexes. They're kind of a great way to get a lot of work in a short space of time, hit a lot of different muscle groups. They give you kind of options that um, dumbbells don't. Uh, they let you get some back squatting in, some bent rowing, they're really nice. An Olympic bar is kind of a better version of that. It's nicer to lift, like bumper plates feel nice. The knurling from a good bar feels good on your hands. Um, it's a lot of barbell to have in your flat or your house, if I'm quite honest. Like, I've had some near mishaps with barbells in the past, and I wouldn't want them near my own windows or TV. Olympic bar, nice to have, not super necessary. Get an easy bar instead. This is going to upset some people, but Olympic bar, for me, C tier. Regular barbell, maybe closer to B tier, but I certainly wouldn't get one before I had a set of dumbbells and an easy bar. Okay, next I'm gonna cover the bench because I used to have a bench in my house. Um, it was kind of useful. I don't super recommend one. Like it expands the range of moves. You can do a little bit. You can do stuff like uh, dumbbell pullovers, flies, things like that. But quite honestly, 
A lot of that you can do on the floor. Benches take up a lot of space. I don't really think, unless you're going to invest a lot of money and a lot of space, you're not going to get a, jet, a bench that's really solid and stable enough to do serious bench pressing. You can get one that's kind of wobbly and carry it around your house. Or if you're going to set one up in your garage, you can get something a bit more stable. But honestly, like unless you're already pretty serious about your lifting and know you need a bench, I don't really think you need a bench. I'm probably going to upset some people here, but if you offered me a free bench right now, I wouldn't know where to put it in my house. I wouldn't want to give up the space. C tier. Okay, exercise bike. Now, exercise bikes are an odd one. I know a lot of people have them. I actually think they might be the best bit of cardio kit you can get for your house. They're quite compact. You can get a fairly cheap one that works. You can put it in front of your TV. You can get some good quality bike sprints in. Personally, I've never owned one and I don't use one very much in my own training. So this is kind of speculation. But I know a lot of people who rate them for stuff like sprint, fat loss, getting some extra cardio in. They're not a bad option. Exercise bike, I'm going to say C tier. Bulgarian bag. Now, this is kind of an obscure one. I think they're a lovely bit of kit. Like, you can do swinging with them. You can use them to add weights to squats, but they're not that heavy, to be quite honest. They're mostly designed for, like, swinging, like, the kind of whirling motions. I actually know a lot of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys who really swear by them as a way to get, like, cardio, a bit of grip training in. I quite like a Bulgarian bag, but I just don't think they're that essential. Bulgarian bag, C tier. Okay, dumbbells. This is where I think things are gonna get controversial. We're talking about adjustable dumbbells here, not the tiny little ones or getting like a full rack for your garage. Just your standard adjustable dumbbells that you can get in any store. And I think dumbbells are great. I use dumbbells all the time. If you get a set, it massively expands the range of possibilities of movements you can do. Overhead press, rows, curls, these are all things that you just can't do without some additional weight. You can also obviously use them to add weight for things like squats and lunges. You can also use them for slightly more crazy moves like renegade rows. If you've got kind of a stable set of dumbbells, you can actually use them to replicate a lot of kettlebell moves like swings. You can use them for goblet squats. They're a great bit of kit. It certainly helps to have a set that's fairly heavy. You're gonna outgrow them fairly quickly otherwise. My only problem with dumbbells is they're not absolutely perfect for the movement pattern you wanna be using for some movements. Like squats, there isn't a great way to hold them. Stuff like overhead press, they're pretty good for, but I think there are better options. But yeah, get a set of dumbbells. Dumbbells are great. Great bit of kit, but I'm only gonna say A tier for reasons that are about to become clear. Okay, the easy bar. I love the easy bar. So I had barely ever touched an easy bar until we went into the first lockdown in 2020. We bought one for the house and I never looked back. They're just a great bit of kit. They're a little bit like a barbell, but I just prefer them for a whole range of movements. You can use them for overhead press, push press, front squats, back squats, bent rows, zercher squats, curls, lunges, Romanian deadlifts, regular deadlifts kind of, overhead squats if you're nasty, just a whole bunch of different movements. And because of the way the bar's angled, they're a lot nicer on your elbows and wrists for certain movements than a regular bar is. Obviously, they're really nice for curls. That's kind of what they're designed for. I also think they're great for rows, and they sit really nicely in the crook of your arm for something like zercher squats. And I think a really key thing about them is they're just pretty portable. They're a lot smaller than a traditional Olympic bar. They're a little bit smaller than most barbells that you will get in home gym kits. And they're just super easy to store, keep around the house, they're light, but you can load them pretty heavy. You can probably get a lot more weight on them than you would be able to do with dumbbells. You can do moves like lunges and squats without kind of banging them into your knees like you would with dumbbells. I just think the easy bar is fantastic. Again, controversial, but I'm saying easy bar is S tier. You should probably get one. Okay, next up is kind of a weird one, floor sliders. These aren't a really popular bit of kit, but they're very small, they're very portable, they're pretty cheap, and they do massively expand the range of movements you can do at home. You can use them to do things like the body saw, you can do sliding lunges with them, you can use them for kind of improvised leg curls, there's a lot of ab moves you can do with them. They kind of let you do a lot of moves you would otherwise need a Swiss ball or a TRX for, but they're just easier to set up and they take up less space. I really like floor sliders, they're not like the first thing that I would recommend you to get, but I think they're really good. B tier. Gymnastics rings. Okay, gymnastics rings are great. Obviously, you need somewhere to set them up. That might be a pull-up bar, like a freestanding pull-up bar, uh, a tree outside of your house, somewhere that you can go to in the park, but they're really good. 
the first time you ever try a dip or a press up on gymnastics rings, you are going to be amazed by how difficult it is. They add a lot of instability to the movement that I think is actually super healthy for your chest and shoulders once you get into the movement pattern. They can be more friendly to your elbows than a regular bar for pull-ups or chin-ups because they rotate naturally as you do the movement. They let you do muscle-ups, they let you do inverted rows. You can throw them in your bag, you can do anything with them. They are great. They can be a little bit expensive. They're not like a totally beginner thing to get. They're a great bit of kit. They're a fun thing to have. You can throw them in your bag. Gymnastics rings, B tier. Okay, kettlebells. Now this is something I really struggle with. I love kettlebells. I've done a lot of kettlebell training. But do I think kettlebells are for everyone? That's kind of tricky. Kettlebells are great because they let you do a range of kind of explosive movements that are kind of tough to do in any other way. Like you can kind of do a kettlebell swing with a dumbbell, but honestly having a kettlebell with a big fat handle on is much better. I also really like kettlebell goblet squats. I mean, you can do them with dumbbells, but they're much more satisfying with a heavier weight. They're also great for moves like overhead presses where the bell rests against the flat of your arm. I find that really comfortable. I love single arm clean and presses with a kettlebell. They're a great conditioning tool because you can put together complexes with them. You could get really into doing kettlebell snatches and you can use them for some crazy core strength moves like Turkish get-ups or windmills. I think they're really efficient for that. The only kind of knock I have on kettlebells is that you have to choose a weight and then you're kind of restricted by that. So a mistake I see a lot of people make is to choose a kettlebell that's just too light. Honestly, if you're a guy, I don't think you should even consider getting anything less than a 16 kilo kettlebell and you're probably gonna outgrow that pretty quickly. A 24 is probably a little bit much. It's going to restrict what you can do in terms of overhead press until you get a little bit stronger. I think the sweet spot if you're only going to get one kettlebell is probably the 20. It's a good weight to work up to in goblet squats. It's a great weight for swinging. It's kind of a nice weight to have on target for overhead press. I'm very lucky in that I have an adjustable kettlebell that has the weights on the inside so it doesn't change the shape of the bell or the way it sits against your arm, which is super important. There are some kettlebells that are kind of plate loaded, but the plates will kind of pinch against your arm, which I really don't recommend. My number one tip when you're getting a kettlebell is to test it out, see how, see how the curve of it fits against the flat of your forearm before you even consider buying it. Kettlebells are great, A tier. Okay, medicine ball. I used to have a medicine ball in my house. I used to do wall balls in my house when it was rented and I didn't care what happened to the walls. I don't think there's that many things you can do with a medicine ball in a flat. You certainly can't do any of the fun stuff you're supposed to do with a medicine ball, like slam it or throw it across the room. Medicine ball, though they're great if you've got space to throw them around, unfortunately, D tier. Okay, parallettes. I have a set of parallettes. I really like my parallettes. They let you add kind of a little bit of extra depth, range of motion to your press ups. They're a little bit gentler on your wrist than just doing regular press ups on the floor all the time. Apart from that, I mean, they let you do some calisthenics moves. They let you do an L-sit very easily, which I actually, I love L-sits for abs. It's not something that everyone's gonna do. They're a kind of uh, wrist-friendly way to do the plank. You can do handstand press-ups on them, although honestly, that's kind of nerve-wracking compared to doing it on the floor. They're a lovely bit of kit to have around, but unless you're like a calisthenics guy, I really don't think you need to set that badly. Nice to have, not essential. Parallettes, C tier. Okay, pull-up bar. Honestly, I think pull-up bars are kind of super essential, especially if you're a guy and you're looking for kind of body composition gains. Most of the movements your body needs to do, you can do without any equipment whatsoever. You can do pushing, you can do, you can do an overhead push with a handstand press up, you can do squats, you can even do some kinds of hinge without really any kit. It's very difficult to do any pulling without some kind of bar to hold on to. Now, pull-up bars are gonna be tricky. I have lived in places where it was like literally impossible to put one up. The door frames just wouldn't allow it. There are a bunch of options available. Some of them clip onto your door, some of them kind of screw into the door frame. You can get a freestanding one that isn't that expensive and still allows you to get some good quality pull-ups in. There are a lot of options. Personally, I think you wanna get the option that allows you to leave the pull-up bar up as much as possible. So maybe get it in a room where you're not worrying about banging your head on it too much. Put a freestanding one up in a room where you can, you can keep it up without bothering the rest of your family. Because if you can keep a pull-up bar up at all times, you are just going to do more pull-ups. Every time my pull-up numbers have been going through the roof, it's because I've lived somewhere where I've just been able to bang out a few pull-ups during the day, whenever I want, basically. I've had clip-on pull-up bars, I've had freestanding pull-up bars, I've had the ones that you screw in. They're all great. 
get a pull-up bar. Another consideration is, can you get a kind that will let you hang like rings or a suspension trainer off it? Because that will vastly increase the amount of moves you can do with it and kind of stuff you can do. I've had a freestanding bar that I could do ring pull-ups, ring dips off, that was great. Um, some of the clip-on ones I wouldn't necessarily trust, trust with rings, especially if I was swinging around. Uh, but it's, it's definitely worth keeping in mind because it's a really valuable thing to do. Pull-up bars, amazing. Pull-up bars are pretty cheap. They're really cool. Doing pull-ups is amazing. The only reason I'm not putting them super top tier is you can make gains without them. You shouldn't feel bad if you don't have space for one in your house. Pull-up bar, A tier. Okay, rowing machine. I used to own a rowing machine. I had a Concept 2. I've done a lot of rowing. I got really obsessed with it at one point when I was trying to get a seven minute row. I probably spent at least six months doing three rowing workouts a week and I barely did any of them on the rowing machine that was in my house. I think rowing is a great exercise. It's a cardio exercise that brings in some upper body stuff. It's great for high intensity work. I'm just not sure it's something you necessarily want to do in your house. One downside to a rowing machine is that they are super loud. If you're planning to row in front of the TV, let me tell you, the fan is going to drown out the TV unless you have some extremely tolerant neighbors. Another problem with rowing machines is that they tend to jump about on the floor. Like I had one set up outside my house for a while and as soon as I started putting power strokes in, it would start jumping across the like the pavement or the lawn or wherever I had it. Rowing machines can be kind of portable. You can fold the Concept 2 up, put it up against the wall when you're not using it. Obviously that does reduce the chance that you'll just get it out for a quick workout. Any bit of kit you are gonna use more if it's really handy. I really thought I wanted a rowing machine and I ended up not using it very much. If you're kind of on the fence about it, I'm gonna say you're probably not gonna use it that much either. I love rowing, but rowing machine is C tier. Okay, skipping rope. Skipping rope's a no-brainer. They're super cheap. They're a great cardio option. The only problem that I have with them is that you probably can't do them in your actual house, but assuming that you've got a garden or some kind of outdoor space that you can get to, they're just a fantastic bit of kit. They're like a little challenge. If you've never done skipping before, it's really satisfying to get good at skipping. I've done a lot of boxing, so I used to have to do rounds and rounds and rounds of skipping. I've done some CrossFit, so I've done double unders. I've got one of those speed ropes made of metal that whacks into your shins when you get it wrong. Maybe they're a little bit high impact for you if you've got some weight to shift or you're kind of older and you've got some joint problems. That's my only problem with skipping ropes. I love skipping. Skipping ropes are portable. They're super cheap. Get one. Skipping ropes, A tier. Okay, squat stands or squat rack. Uh, I'm just gonna be honest and say, you probably already know whether you need squat stands or a squat rack. If you're a serious squatter, if you wanna move serious weight, like if you're a bodybuilding guy who wants big legs, if you are trying to like do your first powerlifting competition or something, you know whether you need the squ squat stands or a squat rack. If you're a regular person wondering whether you need a squat rack or squat stands to make any progress, my view is that you absolutely don't. If you're just looking to stay in kind of regular, quite good shape, you're gonna be able to get almost any weight that you would ever want to squat into a squatting position by like power cleaning it off the floor and either front squatting it or putting it on your back. Dan John has said before that for most people, probably the only squat they ever need to do is the goblet squat. And I kind of agree with that. It's a super easy version of the squat to do where the form is really self-correcting. It's very difficult to get into bad habits doing it. You're not gonna lean forward like you would in a back squat. You're gonna set up nice and straight, get great depth. I really recommend goblet squatting ahead of back squatting for most people. I don't think you need squat stands. They're a nice to have, especially if there's a pull-up bar involved, but otherwise, don't worry about it. Squat stands, C tier. Okay, Swiss balls. This is kind of a funny one because yes, technically they're light and super portable, they're pretty cheap, but when they're inflated, they actually take up quite a lot of space. Um, if you're gonna deflate and inflate them, that's kind of a pain. I don't think you need to use one all the time. You certainly don't need to be sitting on one. I know that was kind of a vogue for a while, but the studies suggest that's not a great thing to do. There are some moves you can really only do on a Swiss ball or a TRX, like stuff like stir the pot, I think is a great ab movement. Um, there are like, balls are a great bit of kit if you have one handy. I'm not convinced they're essential. If you've got the room to kind of leave one inflated in a spare room of your house the whole time, great, do that. Um, if you're thinking about inflating and deflating one a lot, you're not going. Swiss ball, cheap, pretty good, B tier. Okay, treadmill. Don't get a treadmill. Quite honestly, you know if you need a treadmill. If you're a runner who's serious about running, 
and needs to get some extra training in and you're in a situation where you can't do that outside your house, then maybe you need a treadmill. If you are almost any other kind of person, I would argue that you can get better results with almost any other bit of kit. I've done quite a lot of running. I've run a marathon, a half marathon, a bunch of obstacle races. I did all of my training outside. I love running outside. I do not love running on a treadmill. Running on a treadmill is boring. You might think it'd be okay because you can do it in front of the TV. You can do squats in front of the TV. You can do more, almost anything else in front of the TV. If you're gonna do some cardio in your house, I think rowing or an exercise bike or almost any other form of cardio is gonna be more worth your time. Running is high impact, it's overrated on a treadmill. Don't get a treadmill. I'm aware I'm talking a little bit from a position of male privilege because as a man, I can go out running at like five o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock at night and I'm pretty sure nobody's gonna like hector or harass me. If you're a woman and you wanna train at home, I can understand that. Maybe that's something you wanna think about. But for most people, don't get a treadmill. Don't get a treadmill. Treadmill D tier. Okay, TRX or suspension trainer. There are a bunch of different suspension trainers available. You don't have to get the TRX. They all have kind of the same benefits, although there are options that offer like more or different stuff to the TRX. The one thing that I think TRX is absolutely worth it for is being able to do inverted rows. They're great for kind of horizontal pulling and back strength. And there's not really another good way of doing them if you don't have a barbell set up or something like that. Apart from that, a lot of the moves that you can do on a TRX, you can do in other ways with like floor sliders or balls. Um, they're a really nice extra bit of kit to have. They add instability to a lot of movements. They're kind of expensive. They're a little bit tricky to set up in your house. They kind of make moves like lunges and press ups tougher, but I'm not convinced they're essential in that there's only really one move, the inverted row, that you absolutely need to do that they allow you to. TRX, pretty good, but because they're so expensive, I'm only gonna give them C tier. Maybe bump it up one if you've got somewhere easy to set them up. Okay, weight vest. Now, I am a pretty big fan of Dragon Ball Z, but I'm afraid that I don't like weight vests that much. I've tried them a fair bit. I've done runs in weight vests. I've done some of the CrossFit workouts like Murph that use weight vests. I've like tried to use them to do press-ups and squats in. I just don't like them as much as the other kind of opportunities to make those moves more difficult. I find it kind of difficult to move in a weight vest. I actually think that when you're doing press-ups in a weight vest, it kind of affects the chest to deck range of motion you can get. It makes walking around during your rest periods kind of uncomfortable and a little bit sweaty. I'm sorry to be so negative for one of the last bits of kit we're gonna be talking about today, but weight vests are D tier. Yoga mat, good if you do yoga, good if you do a lot of press-ups, Yoga mats are kind of a nice way to get your head into training. Like sometimes I lay out a yoga mat and I'm like, okay, this is what we're doing now. I'm going to do some mobility. This is going to be focused. Let's do it. Yoga mats are pretty good. If you've got the money, get a yoga mat. Yoga mat, beat it. And that is it. That is my full list of every bit of home workout kit that you might be considering. Hopefully that's given you some ideas. Hopefully I haven't missed anything. If you have any thoughts on bits of kit I've missed, or you have any questions about other bits of kit I might have used but didn't cover in this video, please do hit me up in the comments. I've used a bunch of different stuff that I didn't have time to cover today. Hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Please do subscribe for more of this stuff. Until the next one, good training.